Proverbs 10, verse 22. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. The term used in the above scripture is very loaded and goes beyond just the material gifts of the Lord. It speaks about the pronouncement of blessings through benedictions as well. Embedded in the term is the understanding of prosperity, generosity, liberality and benefit. When these blessings flow from God, the promise that we have is that no sorrow or pain comes with it. The previous verse tells us that the righteous are able to feed many. No doubt this is out of the abundance of the blessings of God, but the fools die for lack of judgment. When God blesses us because of the relationship we have with him, that blessing is most significant in its eschatological implications. We're not just blessed in this life, but we will be forever blessed in the bliss of the life to come. We must be vigilant, so we don't live in ways that would block the blessings of God. A few things can cause this, and we will explore four ways we may be blocking our blessings and how we can stop. God desires to bless us as his children and has told us that we must ask, seek and knock. He is a loving father, but we must also live in obedience to him and not take his love for granted. Disobedience Matthew 5 verse 45 posits that God causes the sun to rise and the rain to fall on the evil and the good and the righteous and the unrighteous. There are some general blessings that God has put on the earth that everyone will enjoy. God doesn't save the best oxygen only for the nostrils of the righteous. Even the disobedient is given an opportunity to partake of the natural blessings of God. Luke 11 verse 28 states, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. The eternal blessings of God are attached to our obedience to the word of God. Eternal life is laid up for those who have heard God's word and yielded to the call to trust in Jesus Christ as Savior. But the term used here seems to lend itself to our ephemeral world as well. It also speaks to the extension of God's benefits, the advantages he confers. This is done for the obedient and not the disobedient. Disobedience is displeasing to God and no amount of sacrifice can suffice for obedience. God blesses obedience so that the believer is placed in an inviolable or fortunate position from receiving God's provisions or let's call it favor. A picture that captures this blessing is the Lord's answer to Jabez's prayer, as obedience will cause us to extend. Our boundaries will be made long and large. This happens with receiving and obeying the Lord's embirthings of faith. Doubt and fear. I have chosen to deal with these under one because they both are opposite to faith. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. James 1 verse 7 Who is that person? Verse 6 makes it clear that the person being referred to is the doubter. Doubt embeds poisonous seeds in our minds that will kill our faith. The more we entertain doubt, the more we sink into the mire of disbelief. God will not reward our faith with the blessings we seek. Fear can be a crippling emotion and will cause us to miss out on the blessings of God, such as peace, joy and happiness. We are told, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Isaiah 41 verse 10 God desires to give us the blessings of inner strength and fear closes the door on that blessing. We cannot get blessings of victory if we are fearful. We must proceed in faith. The path of faith is a blessed one. God is forever with us, so we are told by Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. John 14 verse 1 The path of believing in God is a proven track. We can look at the witnesses of Abraham, Sarah, Rahab, Noah, Moses, Samson, Joshua, David and the countless others in the Bible. These men and women exercise Breakthrough! If you have big faith, 
you have a big breakthrough. All of God's response is a response to our faith, to faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. All you need is the faith of a mustard seed. It does not take great faith to believe in a God that never fails. I wish I could tell this to each of you individually that God is faithful. He has never failed. Failure is not in his nature. And he will not fail you. The God of this Bible is still Jehovah Jireh. This book clearly states he will make you the head and not the tail. He will make you above and not beneath. He will give you vineyards you didn't plant, and wells you did not dig. He plants you by streams of living waters, so that whatever you do shall prosper. Only believe in the God of this Bible. There is nothing more powerful than your faith. Yes, you have been praying, but do you have faith? Yes, you have been fasting, but do you believe? Real faith can grab God's attention in heaven and move him into action on your situation. Mark 5, 36, do not be afraid, just believe. God has not left you, God is with you. You are going to make it. When you think you can't take another step, when you think you can't live another day, when you think you can't take another disappointment, reach out in faith to the God that winds and waves obey. He holds the seven seas in the palm of his hand. He calls the stars by name. He measures the heavens with the span of his hand. He is the rock of your salvation. He is the cornerstone, precious, and elect in Zion. He is my shelter in the storm. Small prayers. Connected with the principle of faith is the way we ask and maybe even the things we pray for. We tend to play it safe and forget that God is omnipotent.